the people can say what they want. I think the fans are really realizing now. You're still going to get the odd people here and there. They're going to say, oh, he's, he's this, he's that. Um, you know, we're just focused on, on one job. We've got tunnel vision, oh, no. and, we're, and we continue beating, and we cont- continue proving um, everyone wrong. And they're going to say, say the same thing when I fight Terry Fimo Lopez. They're going to they're gonna, um, say, no chance, he can't beat this guy. But I love that underdog mentality. I've always had it. And um, even going into the fight, if I'm a favorite, I still keep that underdog mentality. Um, mm. I'm confident. I have self-belief. And there's no arrogance. It's, it's not arrogance. And I told Solby after the fight, it was never arrogance, mate. This was the self-belief of mm. the talent that I have. Yeah. I think that's that's your biggest strength, George, is your mental mental strength. I know even playing junior sports when I was growing up, you know, if you've got any little bit of self-doubt, you're fucked. And, and you've just got that mental strength and that gets you over the edge. Look, 100% mentally, you've got to be, you know, the elite of the elite. You've got to have no mental um, problems at all when it comes mm. to a fight. No doubt. And one of the things leading into this fight, as soon as, you know, any bit of doubt, any bit of anything would come to my head, I'd say it out loud, no doubt. And I'd be in the gym doing pads, no doubt. I'd say it. And obviously people say, well, what are you saying, no doubt? I go, because there's no doubt that I'm going to beat Lee Selby. And just saying that word was eliminating anything. That's just the mental strength that I have. Um, I read a lot of, you know, uh, books about warriors, about samurai warriors, about Spartan warriors, um, you know, about di- different things. I- I'm not just the average fighter. I'm not this average fighter that um, just goes in there and fights, trains and fights. There's a whole different different look about what I Jay, do. Like, Jay, getting back to that, I get fired up, but I'm not having a go, and I'm not going to name fighters, but don't say to me that certain fighters are the face of Australian boxing when, one, they haven't done those things because they can't be. It's impossible. So people that are getting into the sport in boxing, whether you're 14, 15, from fucking Rockdale High School or Cronulla Sutherland Shire, or you want to get into boxing and you want to talk about the face on a worldwide scale, taking on the best competitors, it's Jason Maloney and George Cambosis. Now, I want to, I'd love to see Jason hit back. He obviously just lost to an absolute warrior in, in a way. It was one of the massive big fights, but he didn't win. So he's got to go back to the drawing board. So right now, the face has to be Cam Bosses. And then when you go through, like I just did, of his last five fights, shit, George, I'm not actually, I want this fight against Tiafomo Lopez to be in Australia. But, mate, I reckon you're unbeatable on the road. You've gone to Vegas, New York, Greece, Wales, Malaysia, back to Vegas before that. Come on, name us. Um, yeah, look. You name an Australian fighter that's doing that. No one. No one. Uh, look, we're, we're, we're the road warrior, but... Um... I mean, there's, there's, there's no case that I am the face of Australian boxing now. I'm the king of Australian boxing. I'm the pound for pound number 100%. one. And, and let's not go on an independent, uh, independent rating. Let's go to box rec where it's properly done with points. That's let's it. see who's the number one is. I'm the number one there. I'm number one in the world. And um, facts are facts. You know, if someone deserves to be the number one, then I'll say, yeah, you know what? Well, you've earned it. But no one has earned it as more as I have. Um, mm. But again, I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm here to, to rise Australian boxing. I'm here to make Australian boxing the best that it can be. And I'm, I'm proud and, and happy to be the number one guy now, the face of it, the king of Australian boxing, where I can um, push it on the overseas market and show that we can compete with the best fighters in the world. We can beat the best fighters in the world. We're not just the typical Australian fighter that comes over and loses. Mm. And look, going back to the TFM Lopez fight, our team, Ferocious Promotions, and my American team has already started uh, negotiations and talk with TFM Lopez's team and Top Rank. So the fight, everything is looking nice. Right. I'm very confident, and we're, we're going to do it here. This fight will be in Australia. What, what for people out there that would say, that's, that's a pipe dream, George, you won't get him over here, what do you think would entice um, Lopez to Australia? Well, if anyone says that you won't get him here, then don't come to the fight when the fight, uh, the fight happens. Sit at home and pay for the pay-per-view, but don't, don't come to the, the venue. It's, it's going to happen. Um, you know, you got to think crowds. We have crowds. Um, I'm the number one mandatory. I'm, he's got to see me. So he has to see me. Um, everything everything is, is, is right. And the money. I mean, Lopez mm. wants the money. And we have the money behind us. We've got the money to pay him very, very well, where he will not make any more money uh, fighting anyone else in the lightweight division or at 140 pounds. Um, and we have the money ready to go for him. If he wants it today, we can get it today. That's huge. Nick, what do you, would you like to see George bring a big crowd to Australia? Um, do you think Lopez would come here and, and how do you think that fight would play out? Um, 
I'd love to see the fight. Um, not disrespecting Jeff Horn and Manny Pacquiao. Jeff Horn was in his prime. Pacquiao was at the end of his career. I don't think Pacquiao fight week took the fight as serious. George says, you know, the 10 weeks that you did with him, he did, but I felt I know fighters pretty well. I thought on fight week he was sort of here for a bit of a holiday and $12.2 million from the Queensland government. <clears throat> we'll but get back to that in a minute. With, with Tia Fomo, Lopez, um, he's at the peak of his career. George is at the peak of his career. I think stylistically it's the perfect fight to happen. And I think anyone in Australia that, that knows anything about boxing, um, especially in Sydney and Melbourne, I'd love to see it in Sydney, George. Um, whether it be at Bank West or whether it be at ANZ, you know, I reckon you could probably potentially get fifteen to twenty thousand people there for sure. As George just said before, shout out to obviously, you know, what Zoo and Horn did up in Townsville. But this is a higher, higher rank scale. I think a lot of people know about obviously they don't know about a lot Manny Pacquiao, but people I think people who know boxing know Tiafomo Lopez. They know he's just he's just beaten the so called pound for pound top five. Lomachenko and George beat him easy. Like, absolutely, Lomachenko did not want to be there in the first six rounds. And I'll tell you one thing, not blowing George's horn, but George in the first six round against Tiafomo Lopez is not going to give that up. He's going yeah, to be right there with him. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm not going to sit there. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and wait uh, six rounds to start throwing shots. Nah. Um, I'm going to be straight out there throwing shots. But this this fight will be bigger than you said, 15, 20,000. No chance. This fight is doing 50, 60,000. You reckon um, 50, Yes. 60? Yeah, 50, 60,000. You've got to think the Greek community alone. Okay. Um, no, but George, I'm just, wherever I'm just, we want to take it. I'm just um, talking about the so-called the rules of the government. No, no, no. Well, look, this fight won't happen until March, April. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, then bigger. We take it to ANZ Stadium. 80, ANZ Stadium holds 83, 84,000 people. Right, so if we get a 50-60% capacity there, oh, well, there's, your 50, there's your 50,000 there. But mm. look, our team has already started the negotiations. Um, like I said, we've got the right people behind us. The money's there ready to go. Um, I'm the mandatory. It's not like I'm not mandatory. It's not like I'm not the number one in the world. If I wasn't number one and not mandatory, people could say, what's he talking about? But I've earned my shot. Um, yeah. And it makes the most sense for, for him to, to take this fight. And like I said, styles make fights. Um, I believe my speed, my power, two young hungry lions, two guys willing to, to die in that ring to, to get what's theirs. Uh, yeah. It's just an exciting fight. And look, mm. never in Australian history has there been a unified title fight for four world yeah. title belts. Never. When was the last um, Australian fighter, and I'm saying born in Australia, to win four unified titles? To win the unified titles? Yep. Never. I mean, never. So this is history. Not only the, the event will be history, bigger than Pacquiao Horn, but um, when I win this fight, I'll go down as, as the best ever in Australian boxing. That's no disrespect to anybody, but this will be a massive achievement. But um, first, mm. the teams will, will, will make sure that we get this fight on. Um, no. I'm already preparing. I'm already visualizing um, Tiafema Lopez. For the last 10 months, I've been visualizing Lee Selby. So now that I'm training, obviously I'm in quarantine, but I'm doing all my work. I'm doing my shadow boxing and, and, and doing some pad work already. So, I mean, I'm already starting to see two from my Lopez. I'm starting what do you think to think of Lomachenko? What do you, you think of that fight with Lomachenko and Lopez? I thought Lomachenko was pathetic early. Yeah, look, um, I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what happened to Lomachenko. Was he, was he gun shy? Was there an injury there with the shoulder? He went for surgery. Um, I'm not sure, but to wait six, seven rounds to start throwing shots. Um, yeah. it, was, it was incredible. I'm looking and I think, what's he doing? Is he going to throw one punch at least? But the thing is, and the thing that I saw in that fight, the holes that I saw, and look, I'm not going to take away from Lopez's fight and his, his victory. Great win. Congrats win. On, your, on your massive win. You beat the man who, 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 had, who had all the belts, who was considered the pound-for-pound pound number one. Um, but if a guy can sit there and not throw a shot for six rounds and, you, and he, obviously you tee off on him, and he teed off, and he, off him, on him in a smart way, he wasn't going crazy, so... He still had plenty of energy, and then all of a sudden Lomachenko started turning the pace on, and you saw Lopez start losing a few rounds, and you saw his conditioning start to gas. So mm -hmm. what happens when you've got a young, hungry guy who's going to take your best shot and throw 10 shots straight after your best shot and come straight at you from round one? That's, that's the argument. That's, that's the argument. That's the exciting part of this fight, where you've got a young, hungry guy that's fast, explosive, powerful, can move incredibly. Um, you, know, you got to look at the Selby fight. I outboxed a superior oh. boxer. My defense was... They never thought my defense was that good. 
I didn't really get hit. What a couple of little jabs and a couple slight right hands where I rolled with the shot or I moved with the shot. I didn't get hit. My face is still clean. <laughs> your, head, your head movement, George, in that fight, I watched the fight again, I have watched it four times. Your head movement in that fight was incredible. How you were just moving straight back off the gap, not even having your hands up a couple of times, just sort of moving like this yep. and just going, what are you doing, Selby? You can't get me. And look, that, that all comes down to obviously, you know, the hard work that I put in. But I had fantastic, uh, fantastic right. sparring from Danny Kennedy in Australia. who gave me great rounds. I have so much respect for the guy. We used to spar years and years ago. When I called him up, I said, look, Danny, I've got a massive fight. I think your style is perfect for Selby. He was straight at it. Um, and he's got a big fight coming up, the Australian uh, welterweight title fight for an IBF Pan Pacific title. And I'm very confident he's going to win that fight. And I back him all the way. Against and then obviously, White. then obviously, yeah, then obviously in, uh, in America, Emmanuel Tago, who's a top three lightweight. Um, Xander Zayas, who's a big, big welterweight. Um, Grace Byrne had a couple other different guys there as well to emulate uh, Selby's style. So all that sparring, you know, got me ready. And then when you get the training, obviously Mick Ackaway early in the piece uh, and gave me fantastic work, showed me a lot of new things, uh, really got to sit down on my shots. And then finishing up the camp with, with my lead trainer, Javier Centeno, you know, who, who gets me so sharp, gets me from these punches in bunches. And um, I've got a great team. I've got a fan team from Australia to the US, great people around me. And um, you know, like I said, styles make fights, and I believe um, I will win this fight. I found your hand speed, George, too, in the latter part of the fight. Your hand speed was so much better. than like It was good against Mickey Bay, but it was just impeccable in the Selby fight. The yeah, hand... look, the, the hand speed was, was, was great. Um, the power obviously held strong as well. Selby's got a great chin. You know, I mean, he's been in with some heavy hitters. He's been in with some good, good guys. Uh, he's got a very good chin. I mean, so even when I hit him with them shots and I heard him and I felt like, oh, he's about to go. Um, you know, he, he just knows, you know, how to, how to survive. And when you're fighting these elite guys, like I said, if I was fighting their level guys down the RSL club, I'd be knocking guys out and around. But what does that, what does that prove? But when you're fighting the elite, the best fighters in the world, the former world champions, you're not going to knock all of them out. Mm. But to, to outbox them and to, to win, obviously, so many rounds and look so great and obviously put on a show, I mean, that, that shows a lot. Did you find, George, and I... I know Sel, we know a bit about Selby when he used to fight at Featherweight. When he came in the ring, I was thinking to myself, how the hell did this guy fight at Super Feather? He was he's, so much. He's massive. He's massive. Mm. And when we're at the press conference and we went face to face and I'm looking at him think, okay, I don't remember this guy being that big when no, we sparred. I go, okay, he's put on some size. How the hell did he make Featherweight? He was big. He was, I'll tell you, I fought some big solid lightweights, but he was Big. He was thick. He was obviously strong. strong. Uh, he carried some. He carried some good power. He had a bit of power there. Um, big, long, rangy, long arms. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that again, that that just shows that um, you know, it doesn't matter what style, what size, you know, the range, how long they are with it, with their with their range and their their hands, um, their movement. You know, it doesn't matter. I'll adapt and I'll win this fight. Mm. Um, Nick, I'm going to say something now because. Uh, we, we talk, you and I talk all the time about how Australian boxing is growing. It's, you know, it's, it's on the right track. It's better than ever. But if the Australian government and, and we're serious about growing the sport, then where's the, I don't, you don't have to talk about money or anything here, George, but where's the money from the government to guys like George Cambosis who are fighting at the elite level to bring a big name to Australia. Why do we bring big names like Pacquiao? I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop you right. I'll stop you right there, yeah, you go, George. Uh, it's it's already it's already been discussed. It's already uh, okay. It's already okay. been in talks, and there's already going to be some positive uh, positive things from from the government. Uh, well, to that's support, good. To support this one because it's a massive event for coming out of the pandemic. This is huge. I mean, to stack out a state, fill out a stadium, uh, to bring such great tourism to to wherever we do it. You know, it's massive for whatever state we, we decide to, to do it. But obviously, Sydney and Melbourne are the front runners. Mm, mm. And obviously, um, we we'll, would have support from Fox Sports' main event. Um, yes, yeah, that, 100%. You know, the... Yeah, that's something we've got to sit down with, with, with Fox Sports uh, once things get a little bit deeper. And mm. obviously, um, you know, 100% that there'll be support everywhere. There'll be, there'll be great support. It's a massive fight. So the biggest fight in... in, in um, Australian history. Well, this is good. This is good, Nick. Well, 
yeah, we have, but I think and, and whether it's a podcast or it goes on fire and hype or the more people, you know, investigate their timing to listen to people who have covered boxing and dealt with it at the, you know, certain, certain levels and watched it and, and got up at seven o'clock in the morning, shout out to Fox Sports, who showed the, the Chisora and um, obviously Usyk fight and got up. The more people that are learning about boxing and, and gathering information are learning, you know, yeah, this is what it's about. You know what I mean? Like I did an interview with Jeff Fennick two days before your fight, George, and he knows boxing bloody through and through. And he was speaking about the high level that this fight's at as well as Jason's fight. And the more we educate people and hopefully the people get on board, the more yeah, people 100%. that'll realize it. And that, mm. That's just the way it is. And this is no disrespect to Jeff Horn and Tim Zhu, but those guys are not the face of Australian boxing. And I'm going to say it. I'm saying it. George Cambos didn't say it, everybody. Nick Noonan said it because this is the levels at. And, you know, shout out to Andrew and Jason Maloney who are at the top. But I use the word, when I talk about George, I use the word pinnacle. The pinnacle is the enchilon of the top. That's where George is at. And then whenever, yeah. when, he beats, when he beats Tiafomo Lopez in Australia, then everyone will go, oh, my God, Nick, oh, you, George Cambosa, don't start. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you missed the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, look, at the end of the day, I mean, we know, and, and I think 90% of the, the, the fans know and the Australian public know that, obviously, the top dog now is, is Cambosis, you know, what we've been doing on the road. Even when I've done that interview with uh, Darren Barker, former world champion, yeah. and uh, the other guy from Sky Sports before the fight, and they go, mate, your last fight, and, and they were just reading out the fights, Vegas, then you fought, obviously, Foxwoods, Las Vegas, MGM Grand, Massive Square Garden. All of a sudden, they stopped and they said, well, you know, massive arenas, you know, that's, that's huge. High-level things, you know, high-level, uh, you know, arenas, high-level fights, you know, a lot of pressure in these fights. Um, but like I said, pressure makes diamonds and we're, we're, we're there now. We're, we're at the top now. We're top of the mountain. But, uh, you know, there's still so much work to do. You know, getting to number one is great, but now I need that world title. I mean, this mm. was all, all to get to the number one position to, to be definite getting that world title shot. Now they can't take that shot away from me. You know? And I've been hanging for a long time, but now is the right time for it. And, and another point I want to bring up, Jay and George, too, is when we look at, um, if you're a boxing analyst like myself, and we look at the weight divisions across the world, the lightweight division has something special in it, which it is does. Cambosis and um, obviously the unified world titles with TFMO Lopez. I'm sorry, guys, the welterweight division does not have it. Well, the weight division's great. We have Crawford, we have Spence, we have Pacquiao still in the league. The 154 division does have it with Jamel Charlo. He has obviously three of the belts. The middleweight division, guys, for people listening in, does not have it. We have Golovkin here. We have Canelo that vacated that can come back in. We've got Jamal Charlo. We've got uh, Andre that can come in. I can go on. Cruiserweight does not have it. Heavyweight actually does not have it. What we have in George's weight division around the world is significant and unique. And that's the sell point, as George said before, for Australian people listening in. This has never, ever been done before. Let's do it in Australia. Let's do it whether it's at night time. I would probably think, George, it'll be like Horn and uh, Pacquiao. It'll be 2 o'clock in the afternoon in March. Yeah, you'd have to go with that. Yeah, it would have to go with that with, uh, obviously, whatever way they want to do it for the American broadcast. But... Um, look, it's just an exciting time. It's an exciting time for, 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 for Team Ferocious, exciting yeah. time for Ferocious Promotions, um, you know, exciting time for, for everyone associated with myself, and most of all, an exciting time in Australian boxing. You know, this is a fantastic time where we should applaud um, you know, the time that we are right now and, and what I've gone and earned to, to be able to, to bring massive fights back. And again, like I said, I'm not here to, to push any Australian fighter down. Um, yeah. I want every Australian fighter to succeed take my blueprint and, and do what I'm doing. Um, obviously, it's, it's sometimes a little bit harder with, with, with different obstacles that people can't do it. But I've sacrificed so much. You know, like we're talking about sacrificing away from my family. Oh. You know, so much money um, spent, so much time spent. You now, my son, a couple of days ago, he's, he's taking his first steps. So I've missed oh. that. You know, I've missed that. But again, it, it's, it's part of, you know, what I'm trying to achieve for not only for myself, but for my family and for, you know, Australian boxing, the people around me. But, George, um, when you walked into sacrifice. the ring, I actually nearly cried when you walked into the ring. It was, it was a special moment walking into that ring, you know, just, just everything everything about it. And that's why I stood there for, for a split second and I listened to the Spartan, the King Leonidas, obviously from the movie, but him talking. 
Um, and I just looked from one side, from the left to the right, and I soaked it all in. And even though there wasn't really a crowd there, um, we had some big guys. Anthony Joshua was watching my fight. Yeah. Carl Frock was part of the commentary. Tony Belly. So, yeah, the who's who's of the English boxing. Eddie Hearn was right there, um, obviously promoting it. And I just sucked it in. And I looked around, and to myself, it was like there was 80,000 people there. Yeah. And, and all the hard work, all the years and years of sacrifice, blood, sweat, and tears, um, it just came into me that moment. I just, as soon as that music started with DMX, What's My Name, I just wanted the world to know what's my name. Oh, and they um, I believe it's, yeah, they, they know Cambosis now. The world is uh, definitely taking notice. And especially with all the interviews I've had this morning, I've had two interviews with The Ring magazine this morning. Um, and like I said, all these other different interviews, you know, with, with all the American uh, media and obviously the Australian media starting to get behind too. And obviously you guys today, uh, it's mm. been fantastic. What, um, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years, George? Lopez fight aside, um, do you think you'll continue with the American fights or will you look to have a few fights um, back home here? Um, what, what do you see happening? Look, uh, at, the, at the moment, I'm only focused on, on, on you know, Tefema Lopez and, and winning the world title. Yeah. You know, whatever comes after that, you know, in the next two, three, four years, like you're asking, where I'm going to be fighting. It depends. I'd still love to have some big, big stadium fights here in Australia and bring Australian boxing really up there with elite fights and good fights, not just mm. uh, domestic fights. You know, there's nothing for me in the domestic scene. Um, I want to fight the best. But again, America is my calling. You know, fighting in, in the US is I love I love fighting there. The the, the build up, the hype is just amazing over there. And the UK, I, I promise the UK, and I, I promise the Sky Sports team that I'd come back to the UK with a crowd. Because I know how yeah. many of the UK fans were messaging me and saying, we're spewing that. We watched the fight, but we couldn't be there. We wanted to be at the fight. Um, I feel that with my style, with my yeah. you know, ch charisma and, and what I bring inside and outside of the ring, you know, is it, massive for the UK boxing. And, and yeah. I know that they welcome me back with, with open arms anytime I want to fight there. Mm. So you get the win. Um, what did you do straight after the fight? Oh, and Selby. Uh, as soon as straight after the fight, I went to the hotel. I had a shower. Ice cream. No, no ice cream. Training. The fight. I put the training clothes on. And <laughs> my uh, coaching team said, what are you doing, mate? What's wrong with you? I said, no, I'll do a light session. I said, look, look just relax. Please relax. Enjoy just the moment. You're going to end up pulling an injury. So I just chilled out. But I did not sleep the whole night. Um, and then the next day I trained. If anyone obviously follows me on Instagram, they could see I was back in the, in the hotel gym um, the next day. And the day after that, and I haven't stopped. I've been training every day since. That's, that's, awesome. that's, 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 a, that's the kind of fight I am. Um, you know, yeah, great win, number one in the world, but there's more to go. There's more to go. In my head, it is what it is. There's, there's, there's more to achieve. The more, you, the more success you get, uh, the more hungrier you know, I, I become. What's one thing or, or a couple of things that you think you can really improve on this next 12 months? Look, um, continue getting stronger, continue getting faster. Um, you know, my conditioning and stamina is incredible, so that's always going to be there. But um, keep building the power, keep building the speed, mm. get a little bit bigger. I need to get a little bit bigger, so we're going to work on picking up that size. Obviously, Selby, Selby was a big lower. I've stood side by side with TFMA Lopez. Our size isn't much difference. We're pretty much the same size, same height. Oh, uh, okay. I might even be a touch taller than him. But with Selby, he was, really? he was a big guy. I couldn't believe how big he was. Mm. But um, the plan now is, is obviously to get stronger, more explosive, more powerful, uh, more speed, you know, continue working on the boxing IQ, get, become a, a better fighter every time I fight. You can see the difference in class from the Mickey Bay fight to obviously the Selby fight. You know, it's just an, another three, four, five gears, you know, so coming into this next world title fight, you know, it's going to be I incredible this, what I'm going to be. I'm going to be at a whole other level, a whole other I, beast. I want this fight so bad, Jay, because I'm pro cam bosses and you are too. But the guy that obviously is going to manage me next year in America with certain stuff that we're doing, George, shout out to Elvis Grant. He's Tia Fomo's biggest, uh, biggest fan. Well, oh, yeah, he, he supplies him with the gloves and he's with them. So that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, but, uh, no, no, but with this, me and him do business together. But in this one, it's, uh, I want to keep your boy's head straight off, Elvis. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And look, I've met Tia Fomo a few times. We've been uh, gentlemen to each other. We've spoken actually... Not about boxing, we've spoken about other things. And at the end of the day, you know, he's got what I what I want. He's at the top now. And just like he was coming up looking at who's in front of him, now, obviously, there's no one on top of him. 
So he's got to see the guys coming behind him. He's got to worry about the young, hungry Lions coming up him now to, to, to take what he's got. Um, mm. So we're excited. This is a great moment. I, I, feel, I have 110% belief that, that um, you know, I will win this 